On the 4th of April 2019, I had the opportunity to interview one of the best PVMers in the entire game. Lexa was the fourth player to achieve 4,000% in Rage Telos, and at the time of recording was holding an astounding eight first place world records. I really wanted to pick his brain about a number of the things that keep people away from PVMing, including things like keybinds, illegal macros, and what it takes to become the best. With that being said, sit back, relax, and I hope you enjoy the interview. In your 4,000 in Rage Telos skill, using a number of switches as anybody would. You've got a Wand Orb and a Staff for four ticking, a Planted Feet Switch, a Ring of Vigor, a Stadius Warhammer, a G Staff, as well as an Essence. Unlike most anybody else out there, you manually click all of them. Can you talk me through your thinking behind that and why you go about doing that? Yeah, so I have never had mage weapons on my bar. And the video in particular that you're talking about, my 4K Telos, this was a much simpler time. And my reasoning for not using keybinds has basically always been in the past that I simply just don't need them. So I never wanted to go through the effort of not only buying a new mouse, but having to take that time to learn how to use the mouse buttons. I always felt, I, I, I always firmly felt that I would gain absolutely no advantage from using mouse instead of just clicking from my inventory. Basically when four ticking was uh, first got popularized, I still remember it was from Couchy's stream that continuous four ticking was kind of like invented, you could say. I remember talking to my friend, uh, Coolest, saying like, this is, this is insane, this is inhuman. We knew, we understood what he was doing, the inputs, and we just thought like, how can anybody do this? So I went to Lumbridge Dummies and you know, I tried it out. And of course, at the start, it's just an absolute disaster. Maybe like every 30 seconds I could do it once. But honestly, it took me no longer than like 15 minutes before I actually got pretty comfortable with it. And this was completely clicking out of my inventory. That, that's just 15 minutes. So, you know, after weeks, it just became very natural. As time went on, I did feel maybe I should have gotten the mouse. Maybe I should have learned these things. The thing about having weapons in your inventory on any given good kill, like a speed kill, let's say you get record. So okay. it's a really good kill. Perfect kill. There's absolutely no difference from having weapons on your bar or on your inventory. It's not like they just increase your DPS magically. But over like a few hours, it is quite deteriorating to manage all these inputs. So but you went without the keybinds because you could do it without, you're comfortable with it, and you just didn't yes. see the need to add that. Yes, I basically just didn't see much of an advantage, much to gain from... <laughs> And using. correct me if I'm wrong, you still don't use uh, things on your bar for your four ticking. I believe you still manually yeah, no. input that. I'm clicking my stuff all of it right now. That is blinking. extremely um, interesting to me because I recently made a video. It was a guide to keybinds and I go through all my guides or sorry, all my binds and I have an absolute ton. And a lot of the comments were great. Guess I need to go buy an expensive mouse and learn how to press a thousand buttons at a time in order to PVM. And just seeing you doing the things that you do that are incredibly, incredibly impressive and things that almost no one else in the world is able to do, I certainly couldn't do, and you're manually clicking that, that's really telling to a lot of people that it's not about the binds, it's about, I guess you'd say, game knowledge, understanding rotations, and then taking the time to practice. I mean, yeah, it's definitely just you need to not be sitting in your chair just like typing wow, you can't do this without buying a mouse. Like I said, when I first saw Couchy doing it, I actually just thought he was inhuman. And then I went to Lumbridge Dummies and 15 minutes later, it turned out to not be so bad. So I think you a lot practiced. of people with these opinions are like not putting in any effort at all. So they need to go yes. in with an open mind, try it out, and then they'll be yes, surprised by definitely. the results they get. For sure. That's so interesting, honestly, because yeah, I don't know any other... People, I'm, I'm pretty sure you could tell me as well. Are there anybody else? Is there anyone else in the like super high tier world record community that doesn't use action bar binds? Or are you pretty much the only one? Uh, the only person I really know of is Sold Out, um, who also clicks weapons from, who doesn't like use key, key binded mage weapons. He used to have the 100% Telus record. Sort of on the subject of, of key binds, and I already know your thoughts on this, but uh, I'd love it if you could share them. Uh, macros are a huge problem in RuneScape 3. A number of people assign 2 to 1 or even 3 to 1 keybinds for things like Resonance and Blade of Dive. Many people do this and it's become apparent that there isn't a good detection system for those sorts of binds. You've got a reputation for being very much against macros and I was wondering how you'd navigate the issue if you were Jagex. Do you feel like they're a necessary thing? If they can't detect them, should they add simple 2 to 1 macros like many other MMOs? 
How would you go about dealing with it? Yeah, so macros has been a big topic for a long time. And at this point, it is very clear that Jagex is basically okay with them. Um, in the past, it was, my opinion was a lot different. My opinion on macros have changed a lot over time. Basically, at a really high level on this game, most of the skill comes from just execution. This game is very static compared to other games. And basically on a lot of given records, most of the kill, there isn't any creativity. You're, you know what you're doing 30 seconds before you do it. So basically most of the quote unquote skill on this game is from execution. Macros just completely make them execution a joke for some things that would otherwise be very difficult the most popular macro for sure is going to be dual wield the bladed dive um, absolutely um and yeah bladed dive and uh oh and wand dual orb. Orb for wand orb too yeah. wand orb because of four ticking um in the past i was really against this but now i don't think it's that big of a deal but there are some things that people now macro that just like I said, make execution an absolute joke. For example, like full, like when you're hybriding, just full armor switches with prayer, like one to five, one to four switches, like auto G staff, um, dual wield, like that's one to four. It, it, it's kind of sad to see because, like I said, a lot of the quote unquote skill on this game comes from execution and macros basically just. So in in your eyes, the macros that. like that are cheating. Well, I mean, technically it's all cheating because I think the official it stance- It is all against the official there, stance, but they're not yeah, banning anybody for it. If it's the official stance and nobody cares, and then you call it cheating, I mean, that's just a formality. And it's kind of stupid to call it cheating. But like the four-way armor switches that also turn on your prayer, stuff like that, yeah, it's kind of ridiculous. So to to summarize a little bit here, you're okay with the the little ones. You don't think they make a huge difference, but in terms of speed killing- the big ones, like for example, if you're doing a melee speed kill and you've got a macro to bring you a full mage vault switch, you don't like yeah. those ones and you'd like it if something could be done to get rid of them. Yeah, pretty sure I've seen some conversation about like Jagex should actually make like one door macros like official. Yeah, easy two to ones. And like, I honestly wouldn't care that too much for that. But yeah, some of these like one to fours, one to fives are pretty ridiculous. So you think they need to crack down on that. And that's something that especially yeah. if they're coming out with seasonals or new bosses or anything else remotely competitive, kind of like what Telos was, you'd like to see that put into place because if they don't, then the people who are using the macros will have a large advantage. For sure. I don't think Jagex's detection problem is detection is the problem i think they can detect it just fine but they just don't care you think they just don't care so interesting if if somebody's like doing a speed kill for an hour with hybriding and every single time they need to switch to armor and it's the exact same inputs with the exact same delays between them like perfectly that's something that they I don't know, should be able be to look into and yeah absolutely and here's a follow-up to that that you do not have to answer do you know of anyone who's been warned by jagex for using macros no you don't even know and, anybody and i know burned. i not that i know but i do know a lot of i mean i even know a ton of people use macros like that's it's at this point mm -hmm. it's more of a personal choice than a than a rule breaking thing i i swear yeah. half the people i pvm with macro their bladed dive at the very least and it's becoming completely standard but yeah don't need to throw people under the bus i'm just i'm pretty surprised because the macro conversation definitely, you know, comes up more often when watching speed kills than anything else. When you see people doing things that are inhuman and you think either they practice this for years and years and years or something's going on here that maybe is a little suspect. Exactly what you said, pretty much. Beautiful. Well, that's uh, that's some really good perspective on that. And it's interesting that you'd have a, a very against perspective in terms of game integrity and not making things easier. But it does make sense just based on how you've, you know, used your keybinds and you know, how you're talking about how execution is absolutely key and that's the most important thing. Okay, so now we're going to talk a little bit about you and PVM records, if uh, if that's okay with you. Mm -hmm. You uh, you hold a staggering eight first place PVM records with incredible feats like four-man Calfight King in eight seconds, a Yakamaru kill in just over three minutes, and a duo Araxo kill in 138. Of all the records you have, which one was the most difficult to get? And uh, maybe talk me through why as well. I'd say the most difficult record, not the most difficult record to get, if you get what I mean, as in not the most competitive record, but the kill itself, yeah. the difficulty of the kill. Yeah, perfect. I think it's actually my duo AOD kill with Gauchi. Um, but this is something that nobody is really going for. Yeah, there that have one's been not people... really on the sheet, but you yeah. guys beat the previous fastest by like 15 minutes, didn't you? 
Yeah, I don't actually know if there's anyone um, that's going to do AOD to stay with even double our time. That's absolutely ridiculous. Well, the reason I say it's probably the hardest record is, um, I keep going back to this, but RuneScape is a very static game. And I think of all the records that I have, Duo AOD is by far the most dynamic. The kill is far, far, far from perfect, but that's just because of how long the fight is and how much there is to do. I'm sure if we went for a hundred hours, we could cut the time down by like three more minutes. Maybe not three more minutes, but we could cut it down a lot. That is pretty much why I think it's my best record because it's the most creative. One, most creative one, say. absolutely. No one was going for it and you blew everybody else out of the water. You're clearly motivated to accomplish impossible feats on this game. Do your friends push you to go for these records or is it more of a personal goal for you to try and get as many as you can? Nobody has really ever motivated me in that sense. First and foremost, I think it's very arrogant for anyone to say that they're not motivated by ego to some extent. For me in the past, it was a bit more than that. Um, I was in a community clan for a really long time. I always knew that I could probably do a lot better in the PVMing scheme. I mean, this is like even before Kelchi was big. I knew if I wanted to move up in the community and start, you know, setting records, meeting some of the better players, I would like need to do these feats to stand out. So I think it's been in me for a while to achieve these things. And over time, it kind of just became the only thing that I found fun in this game, I guess. Haven't done anything other than speed kills for a really long time, actually. Like, not even casually killing things for money. I got all the money I needed a long time ago for all the gear, supplies that I need. And now I just pretty much go for speed kills. So because truly just playing the game for fun. You've pretty much found the thing that you find the most interesting. And that's what you enjoy doing. So there's no need to, you know, have friends telling you to, oh, you should go for this record because you're already probably wanting to go for it. Yeah. Recently, people wanted me to come back to Telos and do a 200 kill streak without like darts and signs. Darts and signs. <laughs> yep. Actually, one of my biggest regrets on this game is not getting 200 kill streak like a long time ago. A long, um, long time ago. Like I said, I only play for speed kills now. I don't care about like money, that kind of stuff. Yep. The last and that's last time I did care about like stuff like that was like February 2018. So like a year and some ago. And back then I was really good at not dying at Telos to say. So you think you probably could have got that one if you put was, a little time into it? And yeah, I'm like, I'm certain that I could have. Like even while I was climbing, I um frequently held like eight, 10 kill streaks. Oh wow. Like on your way to 4k, you were doing yeah, eight, like 10 on, in a row. Like on my max and rage. So I was certain that if I just intentionally went Taking for the streak time as it, like, it. like going for like 15 minute kills, just this, like, sac like sacrificing everything just for the purpose of this goal. Just to get the kill. Like not caring about kill speed, you know, like using runic, put full acto, even at like 1k in rage. Like just going super slow. And I mean, like, that's fine, right? Because it's if it takes two months and it takes two months. All right. Next question is about kind of getting into PVM. You mentioned that you were part of a PVM clan, more of a community one. And then you sort of worked your way up the ladder after that. But currently in the game, there's a ton of misinformation about DPSing, rotations, and the combat triangle. And it can be very difficult to find good rotations, ability priorities, and strategies for someone getting in to PVM. So uh, here's my question. Do you think this stops people from getting into high-end PVMing? And if you think it does, how would you go about getting the proper information out there for less experienced players? The only thing stopping anyone from getting into a higher state of PVM is their lack of motivation, I think. So you think people should be doing their own homework, basically. So if there's no good info, they have, should be looking at the tooltip and figuring it out. I don't have any sympathy for people who just complain that things are too hard. Oh, this is too hard. Um, this I is was, too difficult. You honestly just need to work for it. Um, there's so many resources, even uh, definitely more than when I was improving at this game, like FCs, things like boss school. So just you feel like it's asking. up to the player to figure out what the right information is or do their own homework to sift through it. You don't feel like sources that maybe don't have the best info. I guess it's up to the player to not just take that for fact and actually do their own homework a little bit. Yeah. Although I think a lot of this game is if you want to improve, it's hard to improve just by reading guides and just by reading what someone is telling you to do. The, because this game is built on a tick system, most 
of the skill in this game will revolve around the tick system. So if you can build a very intuitive understanding of it, then you will instantly become a better player. So pretty much players should strategize and put a lot of practice in. And if they do those two yeah. things, there's no need to complain. It's a, yeah, it's a lot of practice. Practicing, learning the tick system, your cooldowns, what just what abilities to press. And then that's just the fundamentals. Then you delve into each separate boss, but that's a whole different conversation. Yeah, so I preach practice all the time at a number of different bosses, and I, similar to the example you just used with your 500% Telos No Food, I use old clips and old videos of me as a perfect example of, you know, someone who really was a horrible PVMer. Like, pushing to Warden, I think I died more times than I killed Telos. I just, everything I did was bad. My rotations were bad, everything was bad, and it was a very gradual stage for me in order to get a little better. I also have a video of me doing 500% no food. And I remember when I did that thinking that was the the pinnacle of my PVM life and I was finally super elite. And then, you know, now not even that much later than that, I've now done 1k no food. And for me personally, I had to die a lot. I had to practice a lot. And yeah, that's something that I I definitely share your uh, share your enthusiasm for and your explanation for. Because a lot of people think that PVMers like you or someone like Couchy or someone like Zoro, they just wake up and they're incredibly good PVMers. They see the speed kills, they see you guys breaking records every two weeks, and they figure, well, I can't do that right now, so I'm not good enough to do any of that. And then they just, uh, they just give up on the spot. It's all about that practice. And even though you guys may not share it or show it very often, it's absolutely there and it's a crucial step then. Mm -hmm. I think it might be just how RuneScape as a game is, it's trained a lot of people to only care about efficiency and these things learning how to get like they're not efficient. You go through a lot of deaths, you go through a lot of supplies. So people might be less inclined to go through that process. But I think a lot of people will surprise themselves when they actually put in an effort. Absolutely. Well, that's some some really good in insight. And it's cool to see that. Yeah, it's not something that just comes naturally to anybody. And it just does take a lot of work. Let's talk about bossing. Yeah. Of all the boss mechanics in the game, what's something you'd like to see explored in a future boss fight? For me personally, I'd love to see a boss that plays with time and ability cooldowns. Meaningful boss damage. And what I mean by that is when the boss damages you, it actually means something more than your health going down. A good example of this would be Virago, P5 normal mode and P10 and 11 um, hard mode the tug of war mechanic it's uh, it's something that like you know it's so simple but it's so brilliant if you know what i mean yeah and absolutely it's kind of funny because the damage is that actually doesn't matter there it's just the hit but what this leads to is actually meaningful use of defensive abilities and defensive abilities being incorporated as dps at aod nobody's cating for dps but at virago Every blue that you block is like what twenty five thousand damage. I so Cade actually becomes yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, so Cade becomes a very powerful offensive tool. Some like at AOD, I don't think Roman will be happy to hear this, but the things like the shadow pool and up until two weeks ago the ice icicles. These these are mechanics that are literally just like okay, take damage, and that's the mechanic. Yeah, it doesn't actually mean anything I mean, for the scale of the boss fight yes and it, this it's just meaningless you, the player will take damage and just eat some food and that's that's that if you were to say as an example this is just contrived but let's say for every damage dealt by the icicle this is let's say this is before the icicle is 20 khp so it's still 100 khp okay let's say for every damage that a player takes from the bleed damage from the icicle next heals like 20,000 health. That would already instantly be a better mechanic because either you'd be actually having to hit the ice kill, not just ignore the mechanic, or you'd use some defensive abilities to mitigate it. Mitigate it. Now, I don't actually think this would be like that fun, but it's just contrived. Yeah, of course, but just- As, as in a, what I mean by meaningful boss damage. Very good mechanic, actually. And that's something that I certainly also would love to see more of once you uh, once you bring it up. It's something that's been missing. And I think that might be part of the reason why Virago is such a unique boss in terms of when it was released and how relevant it still is in the game. Just always being able to optimize those rotations that are more than just DPSing and hitting the boss and having things like Spellbook Swap for Disruption Shield and having Cading on Tick and Intercepts and everything else allowing you to get the maximum push possible without taking any of that pushback. I haven't had overload for like the past 10 minutes. No, I haven't had, I ran out of restores like half an hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> I'm signing to this. Yeah, I got to sign too. No, it's going to be fine. 
I think I'm going to sign and then my master egg bleed's going to kill me. That'd be my bet, but we'll see. Oh, that was some damage. Oh, it clears your master egg bleed. We it's almost bad, insta cleared that. Dude, that's pretty close to world record, time. I think. A lot of the people who are high tier PVMers in the game are from the EU or the European. Uh, you happen to be Canadian. How is the ping transformation? What's the ping like when you're doing speed kills and records? Because I know normally you guys are on world 138 or another Europe based world. If you know Kelchi, he is extremely stubborn about his EU worlds. He will not PBM unless it's on EU worlds, even if it's like six, <laughs> six uh, AOD just, yeah. with six, yeah, six NA one, and then him, like you're, you're still going on EU worlds. So you can say for the past two years, I've been playing on EU worlds. It's like 114 ping or something, but it is no bother to me. I've actually gone so used to it that even like when I was in the 100% uh, Telos for Uko's tournament, I was on like 138. Oh, wow. So you're just so used so to the even, ping. Yeah, now. even when I'm solo, I'm just like, because I'm just used to this ping. I don't want to go on NA and get used to a better ping than come back here. Oh, yeah, that's probably not going to I don't feel bad. It's another thing that you get used to. Like, at a certain point, ping is just, is obviously a big impediment. Like, if you're playing on 400 ping, that's probably no good. But I don't think there's any difference on this game, at least. If you took a different game, there would be. But on this game, at least, 100 ping and 30 ping are absolutely no different once you get used to them. You've mentioned Couchy on a number of occasions, and you clearly speak very highly of him. In your opinion, is he the best PVMer in the game? So I think Couchy is actually the only good PVMer in the game. And what I mean by this is, um, as I've said like a hundred times before, this game is very static. There's not a, a most of the speed kills, it's just people doing a rotation. As an example, at our AOD speeds on our team, all the majors have on paper, on tick rotations. We're doing the exact same abilities on the exact same ticks, every single P1. And so the end result, when we get a record to the average person, it looks really good. But what's so hard about pressing the same buttons for hours on end, the exact same inputs. The thing about this game is that anybody just by grinding for hours and hours, I think can get pretty good times at certain kills just by doing the same rotation over and over again until you get like good hits. Um, this isn't to degrade any people that have gone for records, but what I'm trying to say is that to be good at this game, I think you need to be able to do good kills without having to like put hours and hours and hours. And I think Kelshi is by a marathon, the best person at doing that. He just needs like no time to learn anything. As an example, if somebody who has never played the game before ever comes and they watch a few guides and their friend plays and their friend tells them what all the abilities do and what four ticking is. And then they go to Telos for a, a hundred hours. Keep in mind, they've never played the game before, but they have guides and they have the friend and they have a hundred hours and they finally get a kill. That kill was five minutes long, say. Now let's say somebody else comes, never played the game before, don't have any friends, they don't watch any videos, and it takes them 10 hours to get a kill. And their kill is like seven minutes. One person's kill was a lot faster than another's, but that person had so many resources. They had more time, people telling them what to do, they had visualized guides, whereas the other person only had their own talent. And even though that person had a slower kill, one is obviously much better than the other. This is a very extreme contrived example. But if you look at Kelchi, I've personally seen from all the PVM I've done with him, how little time it takes for him to just be good at something. If it takes us three hours to do something, he's done it in 30 minutes. And on another side of things, on top of being just amazing at execution. His knowledge of the game is absolutely incredible. So there's a lot of theory to this game. For example, how when you freedom, it forces an offhand auto, how your prayer interacts with your scrimshaw damage and your bleed damage and your sunshine damage and your aura damage, how dragon battle axe is only 10% damage in berserk instead of 20%. All these little tiny things. There's so many little complications in this game and he just knows everything about them. And he uses that knowledge to basically do everything for us. So what a lot of people probably don't know when they're watching the videos is if there, there's seven people on the team, but the couch is told us what to do. All the majors have exact rotations for P1 at AOD. And the reason we do this is because for anyone that doesn't know, if you bleed something, it can get overridden by another. You can't have multiple of the same bleed on a target. So if I corrupt something and then somebody else, the next tick corrupts the same thing, my corrupt 
is gone. So in order to have a good P1 rotation, the majors need to bleed at different times. And Couchy is a person while like I'm playing league and other people are like watching YouTube videos. He's at Lumbridge Dummies making optimal P1 rotations for all majors in a way that the bleeds don't, uh, don't interfere with each, each other. other. And he's done this for like every boss. All, all our rotations, all our optimizations and all these records, they're his ideas. And we're just listening to what he's saying. It's not even a contest. He is the best player to have honestly ever played this game. And it's not even close.